All right, hello everyone and welcome to a very different kind of video. Um, for those of you who have watched my channel, you know that the majority of my content is really just uploading stream archives and that sort of stuff. But this, this video here marks the start of a new series that I'm going to be trying on my channel. And that is going to be a tutorial series on how to speed run Zack and Wiki. Um, so Zack and Wiki, so for a bit of context, Zack and Wiki is probably like my favorite game. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, I, it was one of the first games I ever played. I really enjoyed it. It is a game for the uh, Nintendo Wii um, and something I've been speedrunning since about December last year. Now, unfortunately, this game, it didn't sell too well, so it, it's not that well known and the speedrunning community is pretty small. But this, this series here, I guess, is sort of aiming... Um, to inspire some other people that either uh, own the game or, you know, are interested in looking at buying the game secondhand and they want to get into speedrunning it. Um, this series is definitely um, for you guys if that's what you're looking at because um, I'm going to be going through every level in a different video and uh, I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks for how to speedrun it in its um, IL category, which is the individual level. So that's going into a completed save file and playing the level as fast as possible with skippable cutscenes and everything. And also the any percent category, uh, which is just doing the game start to finish from a new save file. Uh, so um, some of these levels they do have some they do have some differences between the two routes, um, mainly because skippable cutscenes allow for certain um, tricks to be done for levels with cycles and whatnot. So for levels with two different routes, I'll go over them twice. I'll go through each route, and for levels that just have one route with maybe some minor tweaks here and there, then I'll just go through it once and sort of talk about the differences as I go through them. But yeah, this, this series sort of just aims to break down the whole game into something that's nice, easy, and digestible. And yeah, hopefully uh, some of you guys are able to learn a few things from this and it can inspire some more runners to get on the boards because, um, like, yeah, some other speedrunners such as Hero and myself um, really do look forward to uh, new people coming into the community. Um, you know, we welcome them with open arms because a bit, a bit more competition is always... Um, nice fun and we want more people to enjoy uh, speedrunning this game as much as we do because really we've had an absolute blast with it. Um, so I, I think that's enough. I think I've sort of gone over everything I sort of wanted to discuss. Um, so we'll get into the first part. So for part one, I think it makes perfect sense to be doing um, A Journey Begins, the first level of the game. Um, now, A Journey Begins is a bit different um, to a lot of the other levels because it sort of acts as the, as the tutorial. So there's a lot of text, so a lot of this split just comes down to um, skipping text, knowing when there's cutscenes. Now the any percent and individual level route are exactly the same, like you can do every everything we do in the IL route, you can do in the any percent route. The only difference is that in the IL you're going to be skipping all the cutscenes. So there's a big emphasis on knowing uh, where the cutscenes are, so you can press minus to skip them, and also which cutscenes are unskippable, so you have to press A to mash through the text. So that's where a lot of it comes down to, it's just uh, some basic memory. For any percent, uh, you'll be doing the same thing, except you won't be pressing minus to skip cutscenes because you can't, and instead you'll just be pressing, you'll just be mashing A to skip through all the text. But other than that, movement and gameplay is all the same. Uh, now, another thing with this level is it's something that we've been calling, I guess, the restart glitch, but I don't really think it's a glitch. It's more of just a mechanic in the game. So normally uh, with levels, if you press restart, if you press, I think, start from beginning or restart from beginning, I don't know, the button, something like that, um, it takes you back to the very start of the level. But this level's actually split into three segments. So you have the segment uh, in the beginning where you're in the plane, the segment where you're falling from the plane, and the segment where you're on the island. And when you press uh, restart from the beginning, it actually takes you back to the beginning of that segment and your time for that segment resets in ILs because we're using in-game time for that. So that's a really handy strategy for doing the IL runs. Uh, it allows you to sort of splice the run so you, you can do it in three separate takes to make, which sort of helps you perfect each part a bit more. So um, for this one, I'm going to start off with going through segment three because that's where most of the uh, gameplay is. So I'll go through that, talking about where cutscenes are and everything. And then after that, I'm going to backtrack back to segment one and two, and I'll go over those two. Um, and I, I think that's all. So yeah, because of the nature of this um, run sort of being segmented, it's also very short to begin with. Uh, there's not too much movement. I've given this level a difficulty rating of one out of 10. 
and I'll be doing this with uh, all the levels. I'll be putting them on that one to 10 scale and uh, hopefully, and that'll be based on, you know, how hard it is to execute some of the tricks, how long the level is, uh, how hard the movement is, and a few other factors that just contribute to the overall difficulty of it. And the reason why I'm doing that is sort of to show you, you know, which levels are really easy to learn and pick up so you sort of know which where to start and which levels are a bit trickier. So, like, if you don't plan on, because, um, like, obviously, you know, if you want to get into running, like, you got to start somewhere. So I would suggest, you know, starting with the easier ones are a bit easy to pick up and then you can slowly start adding in some um, more uh, tricks and, you know, movement techniques for the harder levels. So this is one of the easier ones. Um, there's about, there's two other levels that have um, one out of 10. And then um, afterwards we moving up through the ranks. But yeah, I think without further ado, let's get into going over the uh, Journey Begins IL. So here we are on SRC and we're going to be um, going to the Journey Begins leaderboard. And we're just going to go through this video here and I'm going to play it. And we're going to look through some of the uh, tips and tricks. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the movement, where to aim the cursor and also how to hold the remote for some things. Um, because, you know, this is a motion controls based game. So there's lots of little things you can do with it. I think we're going to start at 720. So first things first, um, when you get to the start of each segment, you want to um, you want to restart. So you can just get a fresh start on each segment. This is for ILs. Um, on any percent, you don't want to restart at all. Just do the whole level in one take. Uh, so anytime I mention restarting, this is purely for the ILs. And when you get to here, first things first, you're going to want to shake out of this tree. Now, usually, you know, the game shows to just like, you know, shake like that or like that. Um, and that works, but I've found um, that when doing this level, and again, I don't know if this is, you know, accurate or if this is just, I don't know, my eyes playing tricks on me or something, but when I get the remote and I shake it this way, so sort of like it's pretty much on its side and I'm going up and down like that, Zach does seem to fall out of the tree a bit faster for me. Uh, that might just be me, but um, try out a few different shakes, see which one I guess you feel most comfortable doing without getting too tired and uh, which shake seems to work best for you. But personally, this is how I shake the remote to get Zach out of the tree as fast as possible. And you can see me doing it down there. Anyways, uh, so again, for cutscene skips, uh, as soon as Zach does fall out of the tree, you are gonna be skipping a cutscene here with minus, but you can't start pressing minus prematurely because otherwise it's gonna once again open up the Wii remote grip controls. So you wanna wait till that disappears and the cutscene actually starts. And I recommend pressing minus once Zach has like fully hit the floor. So as soon as he's like landed and he's on his back, uh, you can start pressing minus then. But again, you might just need to do a bit of practice and find what works best for you. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna click the tree, which is here. Now you can just go for the trunk, but the all the leaves up here are actually part of the tree's hitbox. So I recommend, um, so when you're aiming Wii Remote, you know, you aim it slightly to the right where the tree is also aim it a bit upwards because the canopy is a much more generous hitbox so you have a much higher chance of hitting the tree. Uh, if you do aim for the leaves you should pretty much get it nearly 100% of the time like misses will be quite rare and yeah you just want to go straight for the tree. But another important thing to cover before uh, we go any further is you'll see the cursor here is purple so when the cursor turns normally it's yellow when you're doing like general movement but if it's purple that means you know you're doing an, inter uh, an interaction movement so you're moving so much to then interact with an object. And the Wii Remote will also vibrate when you're doing that. Uh, and it's very important that you only uh, press A once when doing an interaction movement. So um, normal movements, you can press A as much as you want, but when you, when you do an interaction movement, um, if you press A again, what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna cancel the interaction and just do a movement. So let's say I'm hovering on that tree and I press A, I'm going there and then I'm gonna activate it. If I press A again, I'm going there, I'm just gonna walk as close as possible to it and then not activate it. And um, the thing is when you do multi, like when, when you're moving and you then press an interaction movement, Zach actually does like a sort of little stutter and stops a bit. So having to then press A a third time to once again go to interact with it, uh, you start getting lots of little stutters with Zach's movement and it just loses a bunch of time. So when you're doing um, interaction movements, just press A on the thing once so that you walk here and interact and don't accidentally cancel that interaction. This, that's an important thing for just all movement in the game. 
Uh, so you'll know. So with this first, you know, this being the first video, I will go over like these sort of general little things that are applicable to the entire game, as well as things uh, specific to this level. Why can't I speak today? And that there is uh, one of them. So anyways, once here. Um, so you see, I wait for so I wait for Zach to stop in front of the tree. Just rewind him. So yeah, once he's there in front of the tree, and the black tops and bottoms start moving in. That means Zach is like already there interacting, you can't cancel that anymore. So then you want to reposition your remote uh, again to the center of the screen and just start pressing A so that you can then put your hand on the trunk as soon as possible. Then keep pressing A until the Wii Remote grip is gone and um, then you have, and then you just start uh, shaking like back and forth to bring out the centipede. Uh, at this point you're then going to want to skip another cutscene with minus and then start shaking the bell. So what you can do is you can press minus and start shaking so that you can do both as soon as possible. And then after you've itemized it, there is another cutscene. And then you want to pick up the center saw as soon as possible. Now this part here will just come down to practice picking up the center saw. Uh, you can pick up, you can like interact with things and pick up items just before the cursor appears. Because what happens is like say, so a cutscene ends or something, you then gain control of the character and then a few frames later, um, the cursor appears. So you do have control of your character just before the cursor appears, so you can interact with things early. And that just means you need to sort of, um, I guess, from, from experience, you sort of know roughly where to aim your cur aim your Wii Remote to put the cursor in the right areas without having to see it. And that's just something that comes down to practice. But yeah, the center saw will always land in the exact same position beneath Zach's feet, and just practice picking that up as soon as possible. Uh, the sooner the better. So you'll see if I rewind a bit and we just play this section as a whole, uh, we do pick up the center saw pretty quickly with these things. Like I just had the cursor there ready for it. And then once again, you want to position your Wii Remote back up to the sort of top right corner, but not too far, just to where the leaves are. And we activate the tree and then press the chunk again. Then as soon as you press the chunk, you want to press minus to skip a cutscene and then you start soaring. Now with soaring, there's two different methods for this. One is the method I do, which is just you have the Wii Remote relatively flat and you do a back and forth sort of reciprocating motion. Uh, now Hero and I think Bowser Jr. do a second um, method, which Hero discovered, and Hero finds it more consistent, where he aims his a lot more vertically. You still have it pointing towards the sensor, but it's a bit more um, vertical as well, and you go back and forth like that. And for them, it seems to be a lot more consistent and they don't get as many stutters. Personally, for me, I've tried it out a bit and it doesn't work too well for me. So I just stick to the flat one. But uh, try both, give them a few tries, see which one you like best and uh, go from there. So once the tree is sawed down, you need to press minus again. Uh, and then you want to click the trunk. So when you saw the tree, you press minus, skip a cutscene. Uh, then you need to press A to skip text. Then you're going to want to click the trunk. So just aim your Wii Remote like to the center of the screen and then slightly to the right. Click the trunk. Then you skip a cutscene of you walking across the trunk. Then you have to skip a cutscene of the plane falling. And then you have to skip a cutscene of going over, to, of panning over to the treasure chest. Like your little victory cutscene. So you've got to skip three cutscenes here after you click that trunk. You can see cutscene one skip, cutscene two skip, cutscene three skip, and then we walk over to the chest. Now, for the ch now this being the first level of the game, and again the tutorial level, when you go up to this chest initially, normally what happens is um, Wiki will do like the ghost exercising tutorial, where he'll tell you about ringing the bell to exercise the ghost and all that, so you can open the chest. Now there is a way to skip this, so you know we save a bit of time skipping a few. Um, text boxes and this is again it works both in any percent and IL and the way it works is that the um, the tutorial actually activates when you click on the chest so if you just click on the ground near the chest and walk up close to it it won't activate and then you can just ring the bell anyways and get rid of it now as we walk a bit closer there you can see that this uh, podium that the chest is on has like this sort of elevated border and what I do is I move right up so I'm in between the border and the inner tile ring. Okay, I have my foot right on that tile ring and that's where I start ringing the bell. 
And the thing is, you want to be as far away from the chest as possible so that you can still exercise the ghost, but with the greatest distance between the chest and the ghost. And the reason for that is you can see here, when I exercise the ghost, the chest does this little bounce and you can't actually interact with the chest. Um, so what we're doing is we're exercising the ghost from the greatest possible distance. And then whilst the chest is doing its bouncing animation, we're closing, we're walking the rest of the way there so that, you know, we're saving as much time as possible. Now, again, it's like less than a second or maybe like, yeah, it'd be less than a second, but, um, for very optimized, um, ILs like this one and also, um, the very optimized sales like this one and also like 80% where we're opening, you know, um, I think it's what, 21 chests or something? No, not 21. It's a bit less than that. Um, I think 20. When we're opening like 20 chests, like it so does sort of add up to a bit of time save. So uh, just do a bit of practice with this, see how far you can get from the chest and uh, do that. But one important thing to note is that the ghost actually does appear slightly before you're in range to um, exercise it. So like here, the ghost is appearing, but if I were to ring the bell here, I'm too far away and it won't exercise the ghost. So don't use that as a visual cue to know when you're close enough. Um, again, it's just practice and experience and you'll pick it up in no time. And from there, we just walk to the chest. There's a bit of text to skip with minus um, and then you open the chest and you're done. So that is segment three. Now I'm going to go back and we're going to go through segments one and two, which are a lot simpler, a lot quicker. So section one is at 50. So we'll go over there. All right. So this scene um, is going to open up with the blue sky, which we're going to skip. And then we're into the plane. And as Zach jumps up, that's when you want to press minus to skip that cutscene. And then we head straight over to Johnny. Now, again, this is another part that just, I think my camera's gone out of focus. Okay, it's back in. Um, this is another part that comes down to just uh, practice. I find that with Johnny, you only have to angle your remote very slightly to the right, but how you have to angle it and position it is entirely up to how far you are from your sensor, which is gonna be different for everybody. So again, just practice sort of lining it up until you're comfortable, you know exactly where to put it and activate Johnny as soon as possible. And once you're there talking to him, you want to hold B and press minus as soon as possible so that you can skip and instantly pan the camera because that's what you have to do next. Uh, but just make sure you don't press B too early and start panning before you are interacting with Jenny. And yeah, so now once you have the camera panning, what you want to do is, uh, but what we did right there is we have the uh, cursor aimed right up there in the top corner, but not as far into the top corner as possible. We have it aimed roughly where the stage view button is, which is that sort of camera icon up the top next to the items. And we have it positioned there so that we know the cursor is in the right position to press that button as soon as possible because after the camera panning, we do have to press that button. So uh, we're just waiting there for it to like, you know, the timer to go down saying, you know, we've panned the camera enough to move on to the next action. And as the camera starts moving back in automatically um, to talk to Johnny, you just want to let go of B and you want to start pressing A and minus to skip the text and to um, to press the button as soon as possible. So you'll see there, we got an instant button press. And then as soon as we've pressed A and we've like zoomed out, press minus to skip the cutscene. And then you want to position your uh, cursor to the left to click on this lever here, which you then have to press minus and then again position it to click on the lever, which is a little finicky, but again, with a bit of practice, you'll figure out exactly where to put it to grab these things. Uh, don't stress if you don't press on it exactly, like you do have some time to readjust a bit. Um, like, so doing all these, I get, I call them cursor skips where you activate something before the cursor appears. Um, don't worry if you're not getting like a bunch of cursor skips. That is again, something that sort of builds up with experience. Uh, for now, if like your cursor is slightly to the left or right of the object and you just have to move it a bit, it's no biggie. Um, you'll sort of build up that speed with time. And then yeah, you grab the cursor, uh, you grab the lever, you'll have to press, you'll have to pull back, press minus again, then click on the door uh, to jump out and then press minus. And now we're into section two, which is the falling part. That starts at 5.15 in this video. 
again though this will all be done in one take in any percent you don't want to reset um, for a perfect journey in any percent um, and so here we are and we're falling now the first thing you want to do is you want to grab the umbrella and there are two ways of doing this now the way the game intends you to do it is that you can hold B and you can pan over and click the box and pull out the umbrella but you can also click it off screen if you position it like not straight at the top but sort of where my cursor is if you position it here and then up off screen and press a you can grab the umbrella like i just did and then as the umbrella is coming out you want to press minus and skip that cutscene, and then grab the umbrella which will be pretty close to the center of the screen so you can find what works best for you whether it's grabbing it off screen or if you need to pan um, again that'll come down to preference and which one you feel most comfortable with uh, then when you grab the umbrella, you know, you're going to get the item get screen show up and you're just going to want to press A to skip through that. Then wiki is going to do some talking, so you press minus and then you just want to have your cursor lined up to press the item inspect button. Which again, I did there quite quickly, but that is something that will take a fair bit of practice, so don't worry if you have to take a bit of time. Uh, one thing worth noting in 80% is you probably want to go a bit safer here because if you accidentally press um, the other button, the stage view button, and not that, a wiki will give you some more text saying you're pressing the wrong button, and that will waste time. So it is worth it to go a bit slower in any percent if you're still learning. Um, but yeah, in IELTS, because we're resetting again and again and again for near perfect segments, it isn't too much of an issue if you mess up because you can just restart this section and it restarts your in-game timer. And then I press minus and I press back again and then minus and then here I press A and 2 a bunch so that I can skip the Wii Remote and then open the umbrella as soon as possible. And then there's another cutscene to skip and then we just have to grab the umbrella. Now the game always shows that you have to hold the item and then pull downwards. That's not actually true. You can just pull the item, you can just grip, hold A to grab the item and just pull it out of the circle in any direction. You can pull it up, you can pull it left or right or down or whatever angle you want really. As long as you grab the item and you pull it out of the circle, it'll drop it. So that there is, uh, now we're back at segment three, which we already covered. So that there is pretty much the entirety of um, The Journey Begins. So I'll now play the full IL, like I'll edit the segments together and put them all there um, so you can sort of get a feel for how it'll uh, all look. And again, like this can all be done in any percent as well. You just will be pressing A for all of your cutscenes instead. It'll be a lot longer. So the IL here is, you know, 1 minute 14 is the world record. But in any percent, it takes like 8 minutes and 5 seconds or something just because there's a lot more text you have to go through that you just can't skip. Uh, so yeah, the any percent is a lot longer. But otherwise, all the tricks there work. Alright, and that there was my tutorial on how to speedrun a journey begins for both the IEL and any percent categories. This level didn't have too many special tips or tricks apart from the exercising uh, tutorial at the end there, so I was mainly focusing on cursor positions and where to point the Wii Remote as well as where cutscenes are located. 
In the next part though, I'll be going over how to speed run a pretty tragedy and in that there will be some more tips regarding moving the camera for certain movement optimizations and other tricks like efficient itemizations. So there will be some more interesting things to cover then. I hope this video was able to help some of you pick up uh, some small things, although this is a fairly trivial level so I imagine its helpfulness was quite limited. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed it regardless and I will see you all next time.